For many engineers, surface mount soldering is kind of the holy grail. People think it's a lot more difficult than it is, and people use it as an excuse not to go after certain chips in their designs that would have to be surface mount soldered even in prototyping. It's actually really neat. It gives you a very crisp and professional finish to your prototype, and you can create a very low profile, truly single layer design. And you can use chips in your design that may only be available in weird packages like a BGA or something with a surface mount lug on the bottom that you simply can't hand solder down. Some of the really fun and interesting chips may only be available in these packages, so don't limit yourself because you're afraid of surface mount soldering. You can get any of these packages down with a heat gun if you prefer that method. Some people do prefer that. I prefer to use a hot plate because I can control it a little bit better and I feel it's easier to demo, so that's what we'll be talking about here. You will need a printed circuit board. It must have a solder mask. Solder paste works just like normal solder in that it adheres to copper and spreads out evenly over copper and is propelled by the mask. So if you have a self-routed board with a lot of copper on it, it's going to be messier. You will also need any components you want to put down on your board and solder paste. You need low temp solder paste for this hot plate method to work. Otherwise, it will just be very frustrating. This claims to melt at a temperature of about 138 degrees C, which is a little under 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure it says low temp. We will be using a skillet that goes up to about 400 degrees Fahrenheit, so we can guarantee it will get hot enough to melt that. I prefer a big flat one like this. They're cheap, they're easy. I prefer to use one that I do not use for food ever, but hey, it's your life. Do you. You will also want rubbing alcohol and a rag to clean up your board. You will need non-magnetic ESD safe tweezers for placing any of your elements. And you will also need either a flathead screwdriver or I use the back of the tweezers just to poke parts down if they start to come up. Now, get safe, put your hair up if you have long hair like me, get goggles on if you're going to be doing anything that is really close up, and I always recommend wearing gloves. We're ready to get started.